All right, so this is the third and last video um, spent on solving this problem. We're asked to find the uh, free response for theta 1 and theta 2. We're given the initial conditions uh, for the displacements at time equals 0, of course. And so we have an initial displacement of 0 and 1. Um, we also have initial velocities, both of them are equal to zero. In previous videos, what we did is that we started by finding the governing equations, which uh, gives us some inertia matrix times the acceleration vector plus the stiffness matrix times the displacement vector, which is equal to the zero vector. Then we found the natural frequencies by setting the determinant of the stiffness matrix minus some um, eigenvalue lambda times the uh, inertia matrix equal to zero. We solved for lambda. The natural frequencies are equal to, I'll write it out, natural frequency. The ith natural frequency is equal to the ith eigenvalue square root of. All right. In the last video, what we did is that we calculated the mode, mode shapes. Um, again, we have two mode shapes because we have two degrees of freedom. We also have two natural frequencies. So the natural frequencies are here, and the eigenvectors that we found are here. Now, in order to find the free response, we need to build the P matrix and the omega matrix. Uh, notice that the omega matrix is the P matrix, but each column is multiplied by the column number, uh, column numbers natural frequency and so for the first column you're going to multiply every element by the first natural frequency so on and so forth afterwards we're going to look for the constants a sub 1 and a sub 2 and the way that we do that is by multiplying the inverse of the p matrix uh, by the initial displacement vectors and then we're going to find b sub 1 and b sub 2 uh, by multiplying the inverse of the omega matrix times the initial velocity uh, vector. All right, finally, with all of that, and actually what we're going to use the constants, is in the final answer, the free response is equal to the P matrix times um, this vector over here. All right, so let's go ahead by creating the P matrix. It's pretty simple. You simply take, this is P1, P1 is here, and you take P2, and you put them together. The omega matrix is here. We multiply the first column by the first natural frequency, and the second column by the second natural frequency. And we get this result over here. Pretty simple. Now we're going to take the, the, uh, the inverse of the P matrix. Just remember that let's, if you have the matrix A, take the inverse. Well, that's equal to, first I'm going to write what the A matrix is. A, B, C, D. Okay, so the inverse is equal to the determinant of A multiplied by D A minus C minus B. And that's what you have here. The determinant, you find it simply by multiplying this by this, which is what you have over here. Okay, and you find minus 3.6046. Therefore, if you run the numbers, you're going to find, to find that the inverse of the P matrix is this guy over here. All right, now we already calcula calculated the, the inverse of the P matrix, so from there it's pretty easy to find the uh, A sub 1 and A sub 2 constants. We take the inverse of the P matrix and we multiply by the initial displacement. Um, 
vector. And so this right here is the displacements when t equals 0. One of them is equal to 0, and the second one is equal to 1. And that gives us a sub 1 and a sub 2. Great. One thing that I would like to note is that um, here, what we're going to end up with is the omega matrix, the inverse of the omega matrix, multiplied by the null vector. And we all know that that is simply equal to the null vector. So what we can say is that this will be equal to 0, and this will be equal to 0. So every time that your initial velocity vector is uh, equal to 0, all of the elements are equal to 0, then you don't even need to calculate the um, omega matrix. So this was useless. I actually did it myself, but I wanted to show you um, it was important to actually, you know, know this little trick right here. Now, we ought, we have a sub one and a sub two. We know that the b constants are equal to zero, and so we simply take the p matrix, multiply it by a sub one times cosine of omega one times t, and a sub two times cosine of omega two times t. That's what you have right here. And when you actually expand this, you find the free response. And that's what we were looking for. And it also concludes our example. I hope you enjoyed it. You need to go through it as many times as you need to. Also, if you need the PDF of this worksheet, again, I posted it in the link below. And as always, I thank you for watching.